There's no denying that steam engines are the star attraction here at the Watercourse Line. They represent the glamour of steam. And much like any other production you see, there's a backstage team that keep the railway running. Let me introduce you to them. Steam locomotives are brilliant, but we do have one fatal flaw. If you want to move a locomotive even an inch, it needs to be in steam. Now this can take anywhere between a, a few hours to a few days if it's cold. So what do you do? Well, you could um, keep it in steam 24 seven, which is highly impractical and very expensive. Or you have another engine known as a shunter, which is ready to go at a moment's notice. Here on the Midhance, we have a team of four of these shunters, which form the backstage crew and are very flexible. They can do movements around the yard, send one down to Allsford to do some shunting, send some up to Medstead to do a bit there. They're fantastic locomotives and it's about time we did an episode on them. So let's look at where the shunters came from. The genesis of the design goes back to the London, Midland and Scottish Railway. They worked out that there were potential savings to be made by employing a single man diesel shunter in a yard, as opposed to a steam locomotive with a driver and fireman on board. In a 24 hour period, a steam locomotive would be required to run somewhere to take water four or five times, visit a depot for coal and to have its fire, ash pan and smoke box cleaned every day. The steam locomotive was certainly a brilliant invention, but not the most efficient. A diesel shunter, however, could stay at a location for several weeks at a time, only needing a depot for fuel or planned maintenance. One driver could be replaced by another at the end of a shift and the loco just kept going. In fact, probably working 23 out of 24 hours, a massive difference. In 1932, the LMS produced a diesel hydraulic shunting loco at its Derby Works by using a conventional 060 steam locomotive chassis to evaluate the idea. The design evolved and by 1935 they were producing the basis of what we know today. A four-stroke diesel engine that is coupled to a DC electric generator which supplies DC current to two electric traction motors on the front and rear axles, hence diesel electric. Who said hybrids were a new idea? Using the steam locomotive principle, coupling rods on the locomotive allowed the power from the front and rear axle to drive the centre axle, giving power to all six wheels. The locos weigh around 49 tonnes, can be driven from either side of the cab to allow the driver to see the shunter on the ground at all times, and were even provided with a hot plate to allow the driver to make tea. With the other rivals in the Big Four watching events closely, it wasn't long before the Southern Railway, LNER and Great Western Railways were trialling versions of their own. The Class 11 locomotives were the final version of the LMS design, being built between 1945 and 1952, the first batch of 14 built being sent to assist with the war effort, in fact during the liberations, the Class 11s found their way across France, Belgium, the Netherlands and at least one made it to Germany. It must have been well received as it carried on working in West Germany until 1953. Our own class 11 is number 12082, built at Derby in 1950, though it is currently masquerading as 12049. Having spent a lot of her BR career in the north of England at Carlisle and Crewe, she was finally withdrawn from Flandino Junction in 1971. The main reason for withdrawal was that she had no vacuum brakes to work trains, and BR was pushing to have all vehicles on its system with continuous brakes. 12082 was subsequently purchased by the National Coal Board and worked in several industries up to withdrawal and moving to Ropley in 2010. 12082 is one of only eight surviving Class 11 locomotives. The British Rail Class 08 was the largest class of locomotive BR ever built, 
with just under a thousand being built in nine years from 1953 to 1962. As the standard general purpose diesel shunter on BR, almost any duty requiring shunting would involve a class 08. Following on from the success of a class 11, the BR design used a slightly larger diameter wheel of 54 inches compared to the 48 and a half inches you could find on the class 11. The class 08 were also equipped with vacuum train brakes. The class became a familiar sight at many major stations and freight yards. However, since their introduction, the nature of rail traffic in Britain has changed considerably. Freight trains are now mostly fixed rates of wagons and passenger trains are mostly multiple units, neither requiring the attention of a shunting locomotive. Consequently, a large proportion of the class has been withdrawn from mainline use and stored, scrapped, exported or sold to industrial or heritage railways such as ours. A number of locomotives still remain on the national network, though not nearly as many as were previously required. On heritage railways they have become common, with over 60 preserved. We have three 08 shunters. 13044 was built at Derby Works and delivered new on the 27th of March 1954 to her first shed at Norwood Junction. She then transferred to Hivergreen in November 1954 and then to Ashford Chart Leacon in July 1955. May 1958 saw 13044 renumbered to the new diesel numbering system, with a D signifying it was a diesel loco. This meant it became D3044. The locomotive then moved to Feltham Shed, where she would have rubbed shoulders with the S15s 499 and 506 until after the end of steam, where she was transferred to Selhurst in July 1968. The move was however short-lived, and in September 1968, D3044 was allocated to the London Midland region, moving to Totten Shed. D3044 remained at Totten and in May 1974, under the introduction of a TOPS numbering scheme, became 08032. With the loco only having vacuum brakes and the increased use of air brake stock on BR, the locomotive was withdrawn from traffic on August 25th 1974 and transferred to Foster Yeoman for use at Mere Head Quarry, where she remained until moving to the Midhance Railway in 2009. D3358 was outshopped from Derby Works in June 1957 and was transferred to the Western Region Fleet, being allocated to Llanethi Shed and then to Neath. After a further period at Llanethi, D3358 was transferred to Landor in April 1964, then on to Cardiff and finally Swindon in 1969. Under the top scheme, D3358 became 08288, with the first two numbers indicating the locomotive class. With its new identity, the loco was transferred to Newton Abbott from February 1978 until March 1981. After this, the loco was transferred to Bristol for a month before returning to Swindon and being placed in store for two years. Similar to 08032, 08288 was only a vacuum brake engine, and with the increase of air brake stocked, the locomotive was withdrawn on the 21st of January 1983 and sent to Swindon Works for scrapping. Preservation came in the form of the Midhance Railway, Woking and Guildford Group, raising money to purchase the loco in order to assist the reinstating of the line between Alton and Medstead. The loco was delivered to Farnham and then moved by rail to Alton on the 1st of November 1984. D3462 was built at Darlington Works and delivered new on the 27th of June 1957 to her first shed at Hivergreen. She then transferred to Norwood Junction and remained there for a number of years before moving to Crew Diesel Depot. In May 1974, under the introduction of TOPS, D3462 became 08377 and in June 1974 transferred to Bristol Bath Road Depot on the Western Region. February 1975 saw 08377 reallocated to St Blasey Depot in Cornwall. With 08377 only having vacuum brakes and the increased use of air brake stock and BR, the locomotive was withdrawn from BR traffic on the 26th of June 1983. The loco was then preserved and used on the West Somerset Railway, 
where she remained there until moving to the Midhands Railway in 2013. Considering the local was built in 1957, never really stopped and is still running today. It's a fantastic investment and it really showed how much of a brilliant workhorse they were. The same with the other three locomotives. And while they're not the star attraction here at the Midhands, they play a vital role in keeping the railway moving. So, there you have it. The shunters, the backstage crew, the stars, or the unofficial stars of the show. I give you the shunters.